All right, this is the second video on improper intervals. I wanted to start by looking at the formal definitions of what we were doing in the last video. So we were dealing with integrals with discontinuities either at an endpoint or somewhere between the two endpoints on the interval. Um, so the first one shows if this is discontinuous at B. So if we're doing the integral from A to B of f of x dx, if f is continuous on AB, so continuous at A, but discontinuous at B, then we define that integral to be the limit as R approaches B from the left of the integral from A to R of F of X DX, if the limit exists. If it does exist, the integral converges. If the limit does not exist, we say the integral diverges. Same idea on the next two. So we can see um, if it's discontinuous at A, we define it as the limit as R approaches A from the right. And then if it's discontinuous somewhere in between A and B, um, if they both converge, we define the integral from A to B of f of x to be the sum of those two integrals like we did in the last example in the previous video. We do something similar for infinity. So we're going to deal with that uh, in this video. So if f is continuous on A to infinity, so continuous at A and everywhere else from A and up, then the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx is equal to the limit as r goes to infinity of uh, the integral from a to r of f of x dx. If that limit exists, we say the integral converges. If the limit does not exist, the integral diverges. And then we have a similar idea for uh, negative infinity. And then if, it, uh, if we have anywhere from negative infinity to infinity, if the integral from a to infinity and from negative infinity to A both converge, then we can split the integral from negative infinity to infinity at A and do both of those separately if they both converge, the original converges. And so we'll look at those examples now. The one we were talking about at the end of the last video, I think I had said from four to infinity, just to keep the number smaller, we're gonna go from one to infinity, but we wanna do the integral from one to infinity of one over x to the fifth dx. And again, I think it's useful to look at it graphically. So we're going to graph 1 over x to the 5th, and it looks basically like this. So 1 over x to the 5th looks about like that. And we're looking at the integral from 1 to infinity. So we're looking at the area under here from 1 to infinity. And again, this is an open area, kind of like we were talking about in the last video. But the idea is, as we go infinitely far to the right, this also gets infinitely close to the x-axis. So even though it's very, very wide, it's also very, very short. And so it's just whether those, which one of those happens faster um, as to whether this integral converges or diverges. I keep working in blue. So, all right. So to evaluate this integral, we're going to say we want the limit as r approaches infinity of the integral from 1 to r. And we want x 1 over x to the fifth, but we'll rewrite that as x to the negative fifth dx. And now we'll do the limit as r goes to infinity of 1 over negative 4, x to the negative 4, evaluated from 1 to r. That's the limit as r goes to infinity of negative 1 over 4, x to the fourth, from 1 to r. And now we plug in r, we plug in 1, and we subtract. So we get negative 1 over 4r to the 4th minus negative 1 over 4. If we remember from Calc 1, the limit as r goes to infinity of that first fraction would be in the form 1 over infinity. 1 over infinity approaches 0. So here we get 0 minus negative a fourth, which means that this integral converges to positive 1 fourth. So we would say the integral is actually equal to that and then um, we would say that it converges to one-fourth. We could say either way there. Okay, let's look at another example. Let's look at the integral from negative infinity to uh, zero of one over the cube root of two x minus one. Now we have to a little be worried a little bit about the discontinuity there. This is discontinuous at positive one half. Uh, we don't care about that because positive one half is not between negative infinity and zero, but otherwise we would have to deal with that separately. So here what we're going to do 
is we're going to look at the limit as r approaches negative infinity of the integral from r to 0. And then we'll go ahead and write this as 2x minus 1 to the negative 1 third dx. Now we evaluate the antiderivative. Because of a quick u substitution, we would get 1 half times 1 over 2 thirds times 2x minus 1 to the 2 thirds evaluated from r to 0. Now we get 3 fourths times 2x minus 1 to the 2 thirds because we flip the 1 over 2 thirds part. Now we plug in 0, plug in r and subtract. So if I plug in 0, I get negative 1 to the 2 thirds. If I plug in r, I get 2r minus 1 to the 2 thirds. Now, as r approaches negative infinity, 2r also approaches negative infinity. Negative infinity minus 1 is then negative infinity. That to the 2 thirds is actually infinity. And then we get negative 3 fourths times infinity, which is negative infinity. We have a number minus infinity, and so this approaches negative infinity when we evaluate this limit. That means the limit does not exist, and so the integral that we're talking about diverges. Okay, let's look at another example. So if I do the integral from negative infinity to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx, it's important to notice that 1 over x squared plus 1 is continuous everywhere, so nothing makes the bottom 0 there. That means this is continuous from negative infinity to infinity. And so then the way we handle this is we try to do the integral from negative infinity to any number, and normally we would pick 0, of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx, plus the integral from that number to infinity of 1 over x squared plus 1. And you pick 0, that's standard, but you could pick any number since it's continuous everywhere. We do then the limit as r approaches negative infinity of the integral from r to 0 of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx plus the limit as t approaches infinity of the integral from 0 to t of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. Okay, now, the antiderivative of 1 over x squared plus 1 dx is inverse tangent of x, and so we do the limit as r approaches negative infinity. Let's make that a little bit neater. r approaches negative infinity of inverse tangent x evaluated from r to 0 plus the limit as t approaches infinity of inverse tangent x evaluated from 0 to t. We'll plug in r, plug in 0, and subtract. And same thing with t and 0 on the second part of this. So we get inverse tangent 0 minus inverse tangent of r plus, oops, t on this one. The limit as t goes to infinity of inverse tangent t minus inverse tangent 0. Now, from trig or precalc or whenever we study these things, we should know that the graph of inverse tangent x looks about like this with horizontal asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. That means from here we can evaluate these limits. Inverse tangent of 0 is 0. As r approaches negative infinity, in inverse tangent of x or inverse tangent of r approaches negative pi over 2 
that's from the graph. The inverse tangent of t as t goes to infinity approaches pi over 2. And the inverse tangent of 0 is 0. That means we get pi over 2 plus pi over 2, which is pi. So this integral converges to pi. Okay, so that's it for the improper integrals videos. I would definitely want to practice this. There's a worksheet with answers uh, to practice, so please work on that. And uh, feel free to contact me if you have any questions. All right, thanks for watching.